In our economy, we've got a bunch of different people that are left this left the job. And all of the senior positions in the senior companies and your contractors, your general contractors, your licensed and insured people, they've all moved up the ladder and they've created this void. There's a big gap in the labor now. And people are going, where do I fill that gap? Well, the guys that filled it are all of the employees and handymen and everything else, but there's not enough of you to go around. Bottom line, a larger segment of this population now will not get on a ladder. And rightfully so. I am 52 years old and the last time I fell down, it hurt. And I can remember falling down from a hell of a lot off the roof and just bouncing off the grass and going right back to work. But no more, baby. If something like that happens to me, I'm in a hospital. I even have started to learn how to mitigate and minimize the amount of risk that I put myself into and homeowners are no different. So if half the homeowners out there are over the age of 50, they're not getting on a step ladder to paint a wall. Remember, I know we're in a recession and I know that sometimes things can seem expensive and they can seem overwhelming, but there is one large group of the population that is not gonna feel this pinch and that is people who are older in the retirement age who are on pension. They've got assets like homes and cottages. They've got savings and there's a whole pile of them out there that are desperate to find workers. And if you can align yourself with people who aren't feeling the pinch, who are looking to pay for services, you can hedge yourself against the inflationary pressure by having a side gig, making $500, $1,000 a day. As a painter, you're damn right you can. You can do better than that. You'll learn as you go along how valuable you are and it all relative to what skills you bring to the table and how professional you are on the site. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all the different things you need to learn so that when you walk through the front door of a customer's house to paint their house, they're ready for you, you're ready for them, you can meet and exceed their expectation, and then result of that is you get referred. Because everybody who's gonna hire you is gonna have friends who've got the same burning question. Who did you get to paint your house? It's the easiest thing. It's not the first job, that's the hard one to get. Every job after that is easy, if you know how to be professional. So let's go through the checklist. Number one, if you're not early for your job, you're late. The people I'm talking to that are gonna hire you you grew up in a different generation. And if their job started at nine o'clock, they were there at 8.30. And here's why. You can't guarantee your transportation. You can't guarantee you're not gonna get a hiccup, you're not gonna get pulled over, there won't be a traffic light problem, turns into a four-way stop. All these issues in life happen. Plus, when you get there early, you know what happens? The boss who starts at seven sees that you're early and doesn't go, oh, Where's Johnny? But if you're the guy that shows up at nine o'clock every day or 9.01, at quarter to nine, the boss starts feeling anxious about you and starts wondering, where's Johnny? Is he gonna be early? Is he gonna make it? Is he gonna be on time? You don't wanna be that guy. This is great life advice for no matter what you're doing, but when you're dealing with customers at home and you've made an appointment, I'm gonna be at your house for nine and it's 10 to nine and you're not there, people of that generation start to freak out because they have zero expectation that you're gonna arrive. Now they're anxious. Then you show up at three minutes to nine. I'm on time. That's the wrong attitude. You're actually late. The secret to being professional on a job site when you have clients is meeting their expectations and then managing their expectations. So what are their expectations you can't manage? Be early or you're late. And if you can't be there on time, you call ahead and you tell them what time they can expect you and then you get there early for that. So if you can't get there till 9.30, you don't call up and say, I'll be there at 9.30. You call up and say, I'm not gonna get there till quarter to 10, sorry for the delay. They'll say, I appreciate that. Thanks for communicating. Then you show up early. Boom, that's how it's done. When you get to the house, as a painter, you're working inside the house, there's a few things you need. One is indoor shoes. Do not expect to come out of your car, walk through the rain, through the grass, through the mud, into their house, and then up the carpet. It ain't happening. They're gonna make you take off your shoes. You're gonna spend the whole day in your bare feet. And we all know, socked feet on a ladder or on hardwood floors is a death trap. So bring indoor shoes. Don't make that rookie mistake. I know it sounds redundant that I'm giving you that advice, but there's always somebody the first time, they're just gonna come with one pair of shoes and you'll be like, leave them at the door, dummy. And they always end up having an accident or they're always uncomfortable or they can't climb the ladder without getting cramps in their legs. It sucks. So do that. One of the things you wanna do before you go is you wanna communicate with the homeowner. Listen, here's my policies, okay? Pets and children are your job. You manage them, you keep them out of my way. I don't come to a job site to have to train your dog that I'm not their friend. I'm not here to make sure they can sniff me and lick me and roll around and play with their little cog. No. Pets and kids, keep them out of the way. And there's a reason for this. You want to minimize your liability. You're a gig economy. You're just there for one day, one time. If you want to start taking on all kinds of risk, you got to charge a lot more money. You got to have commercial liability insurance. But as a gig economy person, you probably in most states don't need that. And if you're not sure about that kind of information, ooh, what's the compliance? What's the legalities? We have that video. We filmed it a couple weeks ago. Check the video description, okay? Make sure you watch that. It's short and sweet, but it'll give you some guidelines to what you have to expect. Liability is the number one killer of business. You make a mistake, you break something important, you got to pay for it. So tell the client before I come, you take everything off the walls, take everything valuable out of the space. You push the furniture in the middle of the room or I got to charge a premium for that. The premium will be determined by do you have insurance? And I'm not joking around here. Listen, I've been on jobs before where a chair 
got pushed. The hardwood was scratched. It was exotic hardwood from some Malaysian country. It couldn't be resanded because of the nature of the wood. So the only solution for that scratch was a complete replacement. That wood was $15 a square foot plus installation. That living room scratch cost the company 26,000 bucks. And do you know why? Because they didn't have anything in the paperwork that says we're not responsible for moving furniture. You might want to write that down. Have a little list of things that you're not responsible for and have them agree to it in writing before you come. If they want you to move the furniture, it's an extra charge but you're not responsible. I've had this happen to me before. I moved a table, had a broken leg. No one mentioned anything. Table tilted, the lamp fell, lamp smashed. You know, everybody was in an uproar. And I'm like, well, yo dummies, you had a broken table here and you told me to move it. Thanks for the info, right? The point is this, there is such a thing as liability in this world. You can't just walk in and say, I'm painting your living room. That's a beautiful painting. Pick it up, go to move it, have it catch something, it tears, turns out to be a Rembrandt, $1.2 million. That is not something you want to go on in your life when you're there to paint a room for 300 bucks. I know it sounds extreme, but people are weird. Even pictures of dead relatives that don't have any value have personal value. So be smart, make sure that you're not the guy that's gonna destroy your reputation as a painter right out of the gate before you even open the can of paint. Have them set up the room, have them understand their responsibility, have them manage the dogs and the kids. You don't want parrots flying around your head while you're working, right? Like it's just nuts. And if everybody understands those basic rules, now all you gotta do is make sure when you show up, you've got indoor shoes. You bring all your gear to the front entrance, you change your shoes, now you're good to work, you can throw your tarps down, and you can jump right on the ladder and get painting. Because that's what you're there for. You're there to paint. Now remember, painting is all about prep. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta walk the room. We've got a video that shows the whole process. You patch all the spots, use the right product, make sure it dries quick, make sure it's not gonna flash. You spray prime it. Okay, you go through cycle, cycle, cycle. And you cut and roll, you sand in between your coats, you cut and roll. And then when you're all done, you finish all the trim. Do not go do a paint job for anybody who says, oh, we only need you to paint the walls, not the ceiling and the trim. For a few hundred bucks, you're gonna be making these arrangements over the phone or email. You're not gonna show up and go walk the property. Here's what happens. Inevitably, these are the same people that somebody like Cousin Vinny came over and painted the wall green. And they got green paint all over the ceiling. You show up. You got two options now. You can paint it perfect. Say, well, the ceiling's your problem, Mrs. Whatever. Or you can say, part of my rule is this. If you don't have ceiling touch-up paint and trim touch-up paint, I can't do the work. Make them responsible to supply it because trim is not trim. White is not white. Flat is not flat. There is a thousand different options of every ceiling and every trim paint out there. So make them supply it. And if it doesn't match, it's their problem, not yours. One of the things you're going to want to do is make sure that you don't have a white ceiling with a green line and then a perfectly blue painted wall and then a green line on the baseboard and then white trim. No one's paying you for that and they're setting you up for failure because they're going to walk in the room and go, oh, that looks horrible. I don't want to give you the 300 bucks. So don't take that job. You're a professional. You're a gig but you're professional. Make sure they follow your rules so that you can protect yourself from really stupid situations where they're trying to take advantage of you. Because there are people out there who will invite you to come paint at their house knowing you're going to fail because they're not setting you up for success. And then when you're all done, they're going to go, <laughs> I got a free paint job. Oh, and by the way, painting isn't just painting the walls of a living room. As a painter, you're going to get opportunities to do all kinds of different projects. One of them, of course, is outside. It's restaining or resurfacing someone's deck. I've already checked. In most jurisdictions, you don't need a license or anything to do that is considered handyman work to resurface a deck. You can sand and scrape and power wash and then restain. Emphasis on staining because the world went a little crazy a while back. We we're trying to get rid of oil products on the market and then they introduced everything in latex and so there's a ton of products out there that create a skin on top of the surface of the wood. Whenever you do that and you've got moisture and you've got sun and UV rays, you create the perfect condition for blistering and peeling and cracking and all that mess, all right? And so what we found out is it hey, don't work. So we've reverted back to the best practice for preserving wood. So we don't have to cut down another tree to build another deck is to use an oil based product. It's called a penetrating stain. And it's got UV protection built in, usually in the form of a colorant that's mixed in with the stain. Our favorite is C2 Guard. We'll have a link in the video description. Even when it starts to get a little older and it needs another application, you can just add it right on top. No preparation necessary. So you can have a client. And you can say, hey, I can save your deck, you know? And you can call me in a few years and I'll come and do it again. I'll restain every two years. It takes 20 minutes. If you know what you're doing, not a bad gig. Situations where you're gonna have ceiling damage. As a painter, side gig, you can get rid of those stains in the ceiling, right? Usually they're directly beneath where hot and cold water lines are touching and the copper and then there's condensation and you get a drip. Or you're right underneath where there's a toilet and they had a problem. And now the drywall's got a little stain in it, a little rust, a little water. And so there's products that you can use, an oil-based aerosol can, you can spray seal the stain and then you can add a little bit of ceiling ceiling paint on that mess, it looks great. Or you can have a situation where you got nail pops and as a painter, you can fix nail pops. You don't have to be a drywall expert.
expert for that. And we've got a video for that as well. We'll put the link in the description, how to fix a nail pop so it doesn't come back. And generally speaking, you can fix a nail pop and put a little touch up paint on that and get away with it in a lot of situations without having to repaint the whole wall. And that's great. And then if it's not good enough, then you can sell your service to come and paint that wall for them to make them happy. But manage the expectation that a lot of cases, the paint left in the can won't match the color and the sheen perfectly because paint's a mixture and everything separates over time and blah, blah, blah. Watch all my paint videos, you'll know what I'm talking about. The other issue as a painter, you might get called, especially if you live in the South, is to patch up the texture. So you're gonna have a damage and you wanna do a small little repair and you got texture. We got a video for that. My favorite is a special little roll on texture and it can take more than one coat, but generally speaking, you can match that kind of stuff up and make it look pretty invisible. Just make sure that the homeowners know. When it comes to texture, there's no such thing as perfect. The only way to do a texture perfect is to resurface the entire surface. That's a major project. So if they want a little minor repair, do your best to get it close, but manage their expectation and hopefully you can get it so close that they're impressed enough to go, wow, what a great job. Listen, this is a great way to make money. It's actually one of the most lucrative ways out there. The only other way you can make more money as a side gig, in my opinion, is be a drywall expert. And that'll be next week's video. So if you think you might be handy on drywall, make sure you click subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. You don't wanna miss that video because I'm gonna show you how to make over $1,000 before lunch. Cheers till next time.